the, the title of, of uh, this uh, talk will be uh, Error Handling in a Futurized Environment. Um, my name is uh, Amnon Khanukhov. Uh, a little bit about me. I will be graduating this month with a bachelor's degree in software engineering from uh, the Technion uh, in Haifa. I have been an intern at Red Hat for the past two years. Uh, I joined when I, was, uh, when I was 19 years old. I've been working on Crimson ever since. Um, for those of you who don't know what Crimson is, I will uh, maybe talk a little bit about it um, in, a few, in, in, uh, in a few slides. Uh, previously, uh, I worked at uh, CERN, at the uh, Particle Accelerator. Uh, first, I worked uh, remotely, and then I worked uh, at Switzerland on a um, new detector called the Phaser. I am also a, a Max, uh, I graduated from Maximim in uh, 2017, and later came back um, a year later to teach their uh, C++ course. And another interesting thing that happened in 2017 was uh, what I like to call it, probably the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals with the IDF, um, which in another, uh, in other words, means uh, that I'm in the today, or part of the Atuda program. Um, but, but seriously, if uh, anybody from Atuda is watching, it's, it's actually pretty nice. I like it. Uh, so the table of context, uh, of contents, we'll be talking about traditional error handling, uh, namely returning error indicators, uh, exceptions, and then I'll talk a little bit about future promise and continuation, uh, more specifically about C star future, um, and then I will talk about the the main topic of of this uh, of this talk, which is a, a throw catch free compile time checked exceptions uh, using a Crimson Errorator. So. Traditional error handling, uh, as, you, as you have seen in C, basically means that functions report failures through their uh, return values or, and or through their uh, arguments. For example, in, uh, printf has a return value of int, uh, which is used when, for example, it cannot format all, or all of the arguments or cannot print all of the arguments in the formulas list, so it returns a negative value. Another example is uh, malloc, which uh, returns a null pointer if it uh, c cannot allocate memory. And another way of doing this is with a global variable, uh, er no, or um, uh, whatever you, you call it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the good things in uh, returning error indicators and some of the bad things. So one of the good things is that uh, well, it effectively decouples error detection from, um, from error handling. So one function can actually find the error, just return an error code, and some other function in the call chain will be the one that actually handles it. One of the cons of that actually is that to, to figure out what all the possible errors are, uh, the developer, uh, needs to go through the entire implementation. And sometimes those functions can be very long. Uh, the reason you need to go over the implementation is so that you know what all the possible error values are, are so that you can um, handle them. Um, another bad thing is that multiple functions in the call chain have to be aware um, of the return uh, error value, which means that their signature has to change um, the, their return value. and Probably the worst thing is that there is no enforcement on uh, checking that return value. So it makes it really easy to forget to call a function and not check the return value. And that can break the uh, error reporting chain. Um, exceptions, so uh, that, that is another mechanism for, um, for reporting errors as exceptional events. Um, Basically, the three keywords, the throw, uh, that's how you throw exceptions, uh, and try catch, a try block uh, tells you that, okay, in this block, there, there might be a piece of code that can throw an exception, and catch is responsible for uh, handling it. Uh, so again, pros and cons about, uh, about uh, this, uh, this approach. Um, functions that can't handle the exception uh, don't have to pay, to, to to pay the price. Uh, what that means is that unlike uh, returning error codes, in the cold chain you don't have 
you don't need all the functions that maybe can't handle the exception to have some uh, indicator that they are aware of that. They don't have to, to have the same return value. It is actually enough that, that there will be some function somewhere that, uh, that has a catch uh, that can handle that thrown exception. Um, it allows for more specific error feedback because the failures occur, occur closer to the point of error. Um, but some of the bad things is um, uh, that there's no enforcement on, on catching that uh, exception. Again, it's, it, it can be easy to forget um, to actually use a try catch and that can actually be even more disastrous than, uh, error, than forgetting to handle error codes because if nobody actually catches the exception, then the, the program can crash and it can cause uh, memory leaks. Um, and once again, it doesn't solve the, the issue where um, to figure out all the possible errors, you need to go through the entire in implementation, unlike in Java that uh, you have checked uh, exceptions. Um, so, so far, any questions? Okay. So, okay. So, um, let's talk a little bit about a future. Uh, so, how many of you are familiar with a future? Okay, good. Then I'll kind of run through it. Uh, so a future is a result of a computation or an I/O operation that may not be available yet. Um, a promise is an object or a function that provides you uh, with that future, with the expectation that it will fulfill it sometime uh, in the future. Um, and a continuation is basically what glues these two together. Um, that is a computation that is executed once the promise is fulfilled. Um, in other words, when the future becomes ready. And that yields a, a new uh, future. So what we see here is actually taken from uh, Avi Kiviti's talk two years ago in C uh, CPPCon when he actually uh, talked about uh, CSTAR, which we'll talk about in a second. He likes to think of a promise and a future as a, a queue with a single uh, entry uh, and uh, single use. So a pr simple producer consumer queue where the producer is actually the promise and um, the consumer is the future. Um, so a little bit about C star future. In C star, a future can have one of three states. The first one is unavailable, which is not so bad. The, like we said, the the, we expect that the value might be available sometime in the future. Best case scenario is that the, valuable, the, the value is available straight ahead. And the worst case is that uh, an exception was uh, thrown when we were trying to compute uh, that value. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about Crimson Aerator. So um, who here is familiar with uh, Ceph? Ceph. Okay, so Ceph is an open source uh, software defined uh, storage that uh, offers a uh, block storage, uh, uh, object storage, and um, uh, in all, all a single interface. Uh, and Crimson is sort of like the next generation of that, targeting a faster, um, faster um, storage devices like NVMe SSDs um, and for emerging technologies like some namespaces. Um, but that's kind of like out of the scope of this uh, talk. Um, what we're seeing here is actually that uh, the error rater is what we use in Crimson to handle um, errors when working with CSTAR future. So the error rater is a wrapper around the CSTAR future. And what it does is basically it embeds the info about all the expected types of errors to the type of future. So what you can see here is that we have a function called uh, foo um, that returns the future of type int. But you can see we have a prefix here, which is uh, ERTR, which is defined right here above, which says, okay, this function can return one of these two error values. So you already notice something that is better here than in uh, returned uh, error codes or uh, in exceptions is that 
the developer can already straight from the signature of the function can tell what uh, what errors uh, what error values to expect um, and another cool thing is that we are able to enforce these things in um, in compile time so we are basically enforcing um, the developer the programmer to handle all those uh, error val error values that can be um, that can be uh, returned. Um, so here we have again a uh, function uh, foo, and you can see that it returns uh, some some uh, error value. In this case, uh, input uh, output error. By the way, the namespace here, Crimson CT error. We'll talk about about it a little bit um, in a few slides. But basically, um, it's an unthrowable uh, wrapper over uh, STD uh, error code. Um, so, like I said, it ensures that at compile time that the caller handles all, all those errors. And handling those errors actually looks like this. One way you can do it, which is, well, you can say the lazy way, is to handle all possible errors in the same way. That is the ERTR all same way here. Um, so you can see what the difference here is that there's a, a, a new uh, function that we added, which is uh, safe then. So traditionally in CSTAR, um, you use then to say that this is a continuation. Um, but we added something called safe then, which is different because um, it gets a uh, lambda function, but also a uh, handler for the uh, possible errors that, that can be returned. And then will not become available, you will not be able to use then, I mean, when I mean you will not be able to use it, I mean the compiler will not allow you to do that unless you handle all the errors. All, all the possible, I uh, wouldn't call it exceptions, but oh, yeah, all the possible errors. Um, and the way it does that is think of all the possible errors are represented in some sort of set. So every time you handle such error, an entry is the, the entry of that error is deleted from that set. So the way the compiler actually enforces the fact that you, you can or can't use then is that it checks that error set. And in our case, we used all same way, so we know, okay, we handled all the errors in the same manner, and we can, use, we can safely use then and uh, do our continuation. Um, so here we have another example of how we, we handle a specific, a specific uh, error, which is the E no entry here. Um, and you can see, can you guys see the comment? Uh, so yeah, like it says here, uh, unlike the previous example, we're not using all the same way, we're actually using just a single uh, handler. And if you recall from uh, this slide, there were actually two possible errors and we only handled one of them, which means that we still cannot use then, we can only use uh, safe then, that is what this uh, comment says here. Um, so let's let's talk about uh, some of the pros. Well, it obviously avoids the overhead imposed by um, try catch when using uh, exceptions. Um, there's, like I said, also enforcement on handling all those uh, errors in the error set. And that is enforced um, at compile time. That is compile time checking using static assert. And uh, like I mentioned before, the error types are unthrowable wrappers over uh, STD error code. So the, um, the prefix that you see, Crimson City error, uh, that is the, the wrappers. Uh, all the errors there are wrappers over STD error code to exclude accidental throwing. So uh, you can't try to throw by mistake one of those errors. Um, which is which is what allows for that compile time checking, and um, it imp improves code readability 
similar to, to checked exceptions in Java because the errors are part of the function signature. You can just look at the, um, at the return type and it will tell you everything. It will tell you all the possible uh, errors that can be returned uh, from that function. Um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to, to mention some references for this talk. Uh, one of them is uh, a, a talk by uh, Radoslav Zarzinski. He also works at Red Hat on Crimson. Um, he's actually one of the original uh, people who started working on, on Aerator and the one that suggested it. He had a talk about it in C-Star Summit. The slides are uh, available here. Um, like I mentioned, Avi Kiviti two years ago, Core C CVP. Um, here um, that he talked about C star, uh, you can see the um, the official documentation of the aerator. Uh, like I said, Ceph and Crimson are open source, so you can see all the documentation, all the code uh, in GitHub. And lastly, uh, a talk by Ben Sachs two years ago at CVPCon. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you. Those are. Uh, you can find me in this email address, this Twitter handle, and my uh, LinkedIn. Yes? You had mentioned Hop in the previous slides, and I heard you on that. You talked about the kind of folding of the, the compile time and the, and pretty much making it more of a stack of things. I don't know if that's Is that kind of base or similar to what we've seen? Yes. So, um, like I said, uh, I am not. I'm not actually one of those uh, that um, that implemented the aerator. I'm one of the the users. Um, but I think I know what talk you're uh, you're talking about, and it it, it makes sense that um, that when that was proposed for Crimson, um, the idea maybe came from from there. I don't think it is still part. Of, it's not part of the standard library, right? Okay. Because, uh, because of his objection, I don't think the reference is. I don't, I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, there's a couple of people that are with it, but you know, time will tell. Uh, there's actually a, a few people um, closer to one, as you mentioned, the one that probably wouldn't go with it, but uh, there's Roper, who has this discussion, uh, who is a, a demonstrator who um, published. Um, yeah, so like I said, the purpose of this talk was just to, to maybe uh, show an, an interested and already implemented way um, to, to uh, handle errors. Yes? By the way, I should note that check exceptions were in fact the subject of that reference. And then in Java, it's also as I understand it, you have an indirect response to that. Um, I guess you can find uh, I guess you can find people who kind of like checked exceptions in Java and people who l like it less. Um, yeah, like you said, I, the, it, it's not implemented in C++. And in fact, if you Google check, why aren't checked exceptions in C++, you will get a lot of threads in Stack Overflow of people asking those questions and then people flaming them for saying it's not necessary. So, yeah. Yes. Okay, so I think uh, to answer your question, well, one, uh, the, the architecture of Crimson is actually entirely based on C star, which means we're only, pretty much only working with futures. So it's not like we introduced futures specifically for, um, for doing this error handling. It's actually quite the opposite. We were already working with futures and we wanted to figure out a way um, to do error handling in a smart way. Uh, when using future. Yeah, but without that, you, the whole idea is, is like, you don't have a way to, to define your errors if you don't have uh, the, the, the type of the return value out of the function, right? The whole idea is that the, you are declaring a new type that uh, includes the data type that I wanted to return from the functions to begin with, 
that contains more data uh, about the possible error and stuff like that that might happen in my function? Um, yeah, well, sort of. Like I said, it's, uh, it's sort of like a wrapper. I mean, you have the, the future and the type that it actually returns, and then you, you basically also mention what are the possible, um, what are the possible uh, errors that can be returned. Now, it's actually a good point because another thing that I forgot to mention is um, another cool thing that, um, that separates it from just standard uh, returning error codes is that the return value um, actually stayed the same. So the, fu the, the, the type of, um, of the future can still be int and the returned uh, error codes can be of a different type. Yeah. Uh, unlike in standard error codes, which um, if you plan to return, let's say, minus one um, as, an, as an error code, and you also want to return um, the good value in the good path, um, not in, let's say, a pointer as an argument, then they have to be of the same type. And here, that is not the case. Sorry, I didn't hear you because of the... So when, when there is an error, mm -hmm. then the actual int is not returned. So uh, yeah, you, it's... It is either or, right? Yeah, that, that, that is correct. Uh, if you return an error, then you return an error. You don't actually return a, uh, a future that might... Okay, so I didn't actually measure performance of that against the other, um, but it, I think it's uh, it's pretty safe to assume that that the performance here would be better. Like I said, because you um, because you don't have the overhead of of try and catch.